Hello and a very warm welcome to our weekly news magazine program, Bhutan This Week. I am Dham Chizam. Our top stories this week. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Dojiang Wu Ongchul inaugurated the country's first community radio station in Zamzi on the 11th of this month. Doksum Town in Tashiansi will miss the local government elections this summer. And tigers continuing to create havoc in Tangchugyeok in Wandifoda. Her Majesty the Royal Grandmother Kezong Choden Ongchuk offered a Tempi ring sale to Tukanal Haga in Punakhazong. It was to commemorate the birth of His Royal Highness the Gese and 400 years since Shabdung's arrival in Bhutan. The event was also to mark the auspicious birth year of Guru Rinpoche. Her Majesty the Royal Grandmother offered prayers for the long life of their Majesties and for the teachings of Lord Buddha to flourish in the country. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Dojong Mu Wangchuk inaugurated a new community radio station in Tohuchen Geok in Samtsi on 11th of this month. The Swiss Development Corporation in partnership with the Minister of Information and Communications and Tariana Foundation established the Lhob's community radio station. Her Majesty the Queen Mother spoke in Lhob as Her Majesty inaugurated the newly established station. <laughs> The Lhob's community radio station is the brainchild of Her Majesty to support the country's oldest indigenous community to help preserve their rich culture and tradition. The station is first of its kind in the country. The station will approximately cover 30 kilometers, which is enough to cover the entire Lhob community. The important thing about the radio station is that it's going to be very hope centric. We are going to take local radio to a whole new level where everything revolves around the Lopes community. Considering that many people have mobile phones and can get in touch with the studio easily, we want to use the radio station to respond to citizens' queries quickly rather than respond to them individually. It will be informative because we are going to be talking about what's going on in our community. We will be providing people with information and current affairs of the country in our own language. That's going to be a big part of what we do. The radio station, which will have its own frequency, will broadcast four hours daily. The station will be looked after by a group of LOPE volunteers. During the inauguration, Her Majesty the Queen Mother announced the construction of 195 homes for the Lop community by Tarayana Foundation. Her Majesty is currently on tour to Tarayana sites in Ha and Samche Zongkaks on foot. Compiled for Sonam Pinzo, Sonam Mugen, BBS News. Paro International Airport opened its new airport terminal. The new terminal will be able to accommodate around 500 passengers. The new building will be used only for incoming flights. It is expected to help smooth the airport procedures for passengers as well as airport officials. Incoming passengers at Paro International Airport were received at its new terminal building today. The new building, along with improvement of the existing apron, is a GOI project constructed at a cost of around 360 million newton. The airport can now accommodate up to five incoming flights at a time. The terminal features 12 immigration counters and three baggage conveyor belts among its facilities. It has eased a lot of congestion problems which we were facing in the old terminal. 
the sole terminal, we could just accommodate one aircraft at a time. Uh, so, especially if we had two aircrafts landing at one time, we were really, uh, it was congested and all operators at the airport, we uh, faced a lot of problems in congestion and people, uh, the passengers were not happy. This is one of the several expansion works the airport is currently carrying out. The airport has also constructed a fire station, a fuel depot and staff quarters. More constructions are in the pipeline. One big challenge now is to get the budget for maintenance works. Our biggest challenge will be now on the maintenance and uh, the obtaining budget from the government. However, we have uh, got commitment from the uh, from the government that they will uh, definitely assist us and help us because we have a uh, nice structure here, new structure. The challenge is going to keep it uh, clean, especially the toilets. The airport also expects to start constructing a parallel taxiway in the next financial year. This will help in the simultaneous takeoffs and landings without much delay. Compiled for Yishi Gelson in Paro, Pemalhaden, for BBS News. Many people are against downgrading of schools in Monger. From the target of 25 schools to be downgraded, only five schools have been downgraded in the last two years. The issue was raised during the 11 five-year plan midterm review meeting on 12th of this month. According to Monger Zonkak administration, People still want schools in their locality, even if there are only few students. Lin Chitring Topge said that the existing small schools pose danger not only in decreasing the number of schools but also providing good education. <laughs> He said if small schools benefit the communities, the government would support their decision, regardless of the number of students. Lynch said government will not decide about the fate of the remaining 20 schools that are to be downgraded. The decision, Prime Minister said, will be left in the hands of their respective communities, elders and the local leaders. He urged them to look into the matter and come to a decision. For Chitin Dupri in Mongar, Sonomugen, PBS News. Doksum Town, the Zonkak's Yenla Tom will not participate in the local government elections this summer. None of its residents have their census registered in the town which falls under Kanda Georg. This has left the people of Doksum worried. Including shops, there are 48 households in present Doksum Town. Although from different parts of the country, most of them have been living in the area for years now. 37 years old Sangi Chuda is from Sakting Geok in Trashigang. It has been over a decade since he has been doing business in Doksu. He said the need for a representative of theirs in the local government has become inevitable with the development the town has seen over the years. <laughs> If there is no candidate to participate in from the election, then there won't be much development activities, especially in the newly identified town. And just in case any problem arises while developing the new town, then there won't be anyone to solve it on our behalf. We will have to do it ourselves. But if we have a representative, then he or she will take care of such problems. Timmy Gobby, Timmy Gibby, Labi Gobby. 
Similarly, other residents said development activities could be hampered if there is no one representing the Yenlak Trom in local government. <laughs> They added they did not shift their senses to Doksum because they were not sure about the insurance of Lakshom in the new town. Tani misi ko leti namlo ni tukchu damra hema doctor zonda ani ugen se angse deva la koi kapsule saji hogi di na. We got three kashu from the zonda doctor ugen se ang in 2010. Then we had a meeting among ourselves. But could not decide whether to register or not. In between, the Zongda got transferred, leaving the matter halfway. As per the constitution of Bhutan, a person shall have the right to vote by direct suffrage secret ballot at an election if the person is registered in census of that constituency for not less than one year. Prior to the date of the election. For now, as per the orders from the head office, we are scrutinizing eligibility of registered voters. But we could not do it for Doxon because there is no one eligible to vote or participate in the elections. <laughs> So when the elections date are fixed by the commission in June or July, we cannot conduct LG elections in Doksum. He added, even if they miss the elections this time, after a year, if the election commission of Bhutan permits, a by-election will be conducted. Meanwhile, the Zonkak census record officer said, if people come with required documents, census registration would take only a day or two. Namgyo Wangchuk, BBS News, Trashi Yangtze. The closing of Taksung Monastery in Paro every Tuesday has once again been suspended. This comes following a letter from the Home Minister to the Paro Zonghok administration. The letter instructs the Zonghok to avoid closing the monastery till further instructions and the ministry will carry out further discussions on the issue. This is the second letter from the Home Ministry. An earlier letter in February signed by the Secretary had supported the decision. The Zonghok Tsogdu decided to respond to the Ministry, requesting for a definite answer. After the institution of eDesk, a web-based monitoring tool, under the Prime Minister's office a year ago, government to citizen and online services have been well provided to the people. EDEX alerts the Prime Minister on government agencies which either deliver timely services or otherwise to citizens. As of now, there are 49 online services. From March last year to this March, Prime Minister's EDEX found out over 200,000 people have applied for various G2C services. From that, more than 190 applicants have successfully availed themselves of services. Only over 10,000 people could not get these services. EDEX is being manned by IT professionals of G2C project under Prime Minister's office. EDEX has a system of color coding that helps to figure out which agencies have not delivered services on time. For example, if uh, you have submitted your application, the date of submission is recorded by in the PM's edX, and the date of delivery of service is also recorded. And if your service is not delivered as per the uh, uh, turnaround time, your application will automatically move to the red zone. So you have color coding like green, orange and red. Green is if your service have already been delivered on time. Orange is at risk. And if your service have been indefinitely not delivered and indefinitely kept uh, uh, undelivered, then it will go to the red zone. For those agencies who do not deliver services on time, Prime Minister comes to know about it through the edX. Prime Minister then promptly questions ministers of concerned agencies. In Geok's, G2C services are rendered from community information centers.
Gopal Kafle, a 70-year-old man from Kikurthangyok in Sirang, shared with BBS on how he has reaped the benefit of G2C online services. I have come to obtain census to process for loan. It is way better to get the census online. I don't have to travel to Zongok administration or to Geok office for this, which really saves time. Like him, others echoed similar opinions. We don't have to travel far. In nick of time, services are on our platter. G2C services were launched by the erstwhile government in 2009. Pamela Hadden for BBS News. Tigers continue to create havoc in Tangchugeok in Wandi Fodder. Over 20 cattle were killed by tigers since last year. Four tigers were spotted in the area during the nationwide tiger survey last year. A horse was killed by a tiger last Wednesday just near the Georg Center. People say cattle are attacked almost every month. Earlier last week, an ox fell prey to a tiger. Locals are worried with repeated attacks. Now, tigers have started to come near our houses. Last time, an ox was killed by a tiger nearby. Earlier, there were no reports of tigers coming near the settlement. It is very risky. Nine cattle were killed by tigers this year alone. There are more people who do not report the case to the Gyo than those who report. We have not heard of anyone getting compensation till now. I think people doesn't expect much. Locals said the procedure to get compensation is complicated. Instead, they keep the leftovers, if any. For Komal Kharka, Damchuzan, BBS News. The salary of the police will be revised from July this year. The Prime Minister, who is in Hlinzi for midterm review, announced the revision. The salaries have been revised by a maximum of 38%. The last salary for the police was revised in 2011. <laughs> More traditional and max dancers might take part in local festivals after the government decided to increase their wages. Until today, many parts of the country have been facing the problem of getting the performers due to low wage rate. Locals are busy practicing mask dances for the upcoming Sirang Seju, but this time with renewed enthusiasm. <laughs> In the past, I was keen in performing, but we were paid only 150 new term a day. So I lost interest and decided that from next year I will not take part. But the Prime Minister announced that our wages will be doubled. So now I think I must take part next year. I have been performing mark stances for about 17 years now. Started with just 15 ilton per day and gradually increased to 115 ilton. But the news of revision comes as a relief for us to engage more in this performing art. And I think more people will join us now.
It is difficult when we are provided only 115 item per day, but we continue to perform to serve the government. When we heard the news of the revision, we were so happy because we will be getting more than 115 item now. It will cover our expenses during local events. The dancers said most of their friends refused to take part in the local festivals until today. Till now we had problem in getting performers because they were paid less. But now with the raise we hope everyone will participate. I think we the public and Georg should also encourage our children. Lead dancers like Dodam, Champe, Chamju and Tupin will now be paid around 24,000 newton annually and other dancers will get around 18,000 every year. The daily subsistence allowances for the dancers has also been increased. Lead dancers will get 500 newton while others will be paid 300 newton. The increase will come into effect from June this year. The annual Tsirang Tsechu will begin on Wednesday. Compile for Kim Chutsring, Sunam Pem, BBS News. Chandan Project, a project to preserve cypress trees, is what Tanchu Geok in Ondi Forda is planning to start. It is an answer to extensive utilization of its timber. Locals say the Geok has the highest reserve of the national tree in the country. Tanchu Geok supplies the timber of cypress trees for most of the renovations and reconstructions of government structures. The timber from the Gyeok was used to renovate Paratak Tsang, Tongsa Zong, and recently it is being used for reconstructing Wangdipodang Zong. There is risk of exploitation of the environment in Danchu Gyeok. When trees are taken for timber from here for important projects, we are worried whether we will be able to preserve the trees. But efforts continue. Last year, cypress trees were planted in about four acres of land. The Georg also has plans to set up a tender project to preserve cypress trees. We are planning to set up a nursery and collect seeds from the forest and grow the trees. The main idea is to conserve the species native to this place. Recently, a team from Scotland visited the Georg to help in its conservation efforts. Locals learned about the methods of collecting cypress seeds and other techniques. The timber is in great demand, which means that the natural forest is being depleted. We know that it's possible to create plantations of it elsewhere in the country, and it's very important that that happens, because if there is an alternative supply of timber in managed plantations, that will take pressure off the natural forest. And if the pressure is off the natural forest, conservation will be easier. But the community project that has been set up here is going to make a very big difference and help to secure its future. Cypress tree is considered sacred to the Bhutanese. Its wooden branches are also used as incense and its timber is resistant to termites and insects. Compiled for Komal Karka, Kiliangton, BBS News. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining us. This is Tom Chizam saying goodbye.